All right, let's talk about counting back and counting up for subtraction. So counting up and counting back are two different but related strategies. And let's just quickly uh, go over the difference between the two. So counting back is when we start with the bigger number and we just count back. So for example, eight, seven, six, five. We're counting back by three and we get a difference of five. Counting up, on the other hand, is when we start with a smaller number and we count up to the bigger number in order to find the difference. So for this example, we would start with six and count up seven, eight. We've counted up by two, so our difference is two. Now, if we were going to uh, use that with bigger numbers, for example, if we have 100, subtract 98, would it be effective to count back? Not really, right? Because we're not going to start with 100 and then count back all the way to two. It would be more effective to start with the smaller number, 98, and then count up 99, 100 to find the difference. So this is a great conversation to have with your kids. When does it make sense to count back and when does it make sense to count up? And obviously if the, if the uh, smaller number is too big, counting back just doesn't make sense because it's way too easy to get confused and get mixed up. So basically uh, we're trying to come to the conclusion here that counting back works best when you have a smaller mid, uh, second number but that you're taking away. Um, so a one, two, three, or four ideally. Counting up works best when we have a smaller difference between the two. So if we can tell that it's going to be a smaller difference, counting up is effective. Now we don't want to start our strategy instruction or modeling with this kind of abstract representation. And I just want to talk briefly about the CRA model, which if you've watched my other videos, you are already familiar with this. So the CRA model is uh, an approach to teaching math. C is concrete, R is representational, and A is abstract. So concrete means starting with hands-on manipulatives, things that we can touch and move and manipulate. Representation, representational, sorry, is when we are drawing a representation of those items. Okay, an abstract is when we're actually working with numbers and symbols. So here's what happens too often in math, especially in upper elementary. We start with the abstract because we think that this is a waste of time in here. So we start with the abstract and we try to explain things in a way for our students to understand, but this creates huge gaps for the kids that really, really, really need the work with the concrete and representational uh, phases. So we always want to start with concrete. And when I say start with concrete, I don't mean do one class of concrete and then quickly rush ahead to, to abstract. I mean actually trying to incorporate concrete in as much of your math lessons as possible. I personally believe that a lot of the reason for uh, challenges that kids have with math is because there's not enough emphasis in the concrete phase. We're not giving kids enough time to actually see the math. We're just expecting them to have these uh, visuals in their head, but they just don't have them yet. So let's talk about how we can use the CRA model to reinforce counting back and counting up as a strategy. So I'm going to get out one of my favorite math tools, and this is a bead string or a beaded number line. And so I just made this with uh, cheap materials that I bought online. This is just elastic craft rope and some pony beads. And I made a hundred bead strings, so they're in groups of 10, which um, makes it very visual for the, for the students. So let's talk about counting back. If we are trying to model uh, 12 subtract three, we are going to start with 12. Now, here's an important note to make. We don't need to count one by one, do we? we? We know that there's already 10 in a group, so 10 reds and two whites will make 12. And then we're just going to count back. 11, 10, nine. Okay, and we can see that we have nine left. This also makes it very visual that we have two parts. Three and nine are our parts. 
and 12 was our whole. So this is making parts and wholes visual as well. Now, how could we take this concrete representation and use it for the representational phase? So when we're asking our students to actually draw pictures, well, there's a few ways, and and this is great for your students to decide on their own how they want to represent how they want to represent this. So we could draw 12 of something, and then simply show that we're taking away three. We could also use a number line. And we're going to do three jumps back. And that is actually a really good representation of the beaded number line as well. So there's lots of choice here. And then once we've done a ton of practice with concrete and representation, then we can focus on the abstract. Now it's even better if you can think of the CRE model as a Venn diagram And rather than starting concrete and then moving to representational and then moving to abstract, what if we did all three all together as much as we can? So when, when we're doing number talks or math lessons or small guided math groups, we're showing the math in all different ways so that we can really maximize the way that students are building their understanding. So here's an example of counting back. Let's talk about counting up. So we might use counting up for something like 10 subtract eight. So when we count up, we're gonna start with the smaller number and we're simply trying to find the difference between the two. So if we start with eight, which again, I don't need to count out one by one because I know that eight is two less than 10. And then we're going to count up to 10, nine, 10, we can see that the difference is two. Again, here, are our parts and together they make our whole. So here's a great concrete way to do it. We could also use base 10 blocks as a concrete tool. So we start with eight, there's eight, and then we just count up to 10, nine, 10. And here we can see again our two parts, two and eight, and together they make 10, okay? This is all concrete experiences. When we want our students to work in the representational phase, how could we do this? Well, we could start out by drawing eight of something. We're starting with eight, and what's how many more to get 10? Two more. Okay, we could do that. We could also use a number line, which is one of my favorite ways to, to do counting up. So we're just going to start with eight. Now, how many more? Do we need to get to 10 or how many are in between? What's the difference? Nine, 10. So we made two jumps, so the difference is two. So I wanna encourage you to really think when you're teaching a new math topic, whether it is one of these strategies or something completely different. First question you ask yourself, how can I make this concrete for my students? Or how can my students work with this skill in a concrete way that is going to help them build their overall understanding? And I know that sometimes this stuff with the manipulatives, it feels like a waste of time because I know, well, I know I used to feel like this was the end goal. So it's, it's like a rush to get to the end goal. It's really not because the more time that you spend building understanding with concrete and representational, the, it'll pay off when you get to this stage because their understanding is already built. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed this video. If you are interested in hearing more about other mental math strategies, please visit my website at shellygrayteaching.com. Thanks so much, I hope you have a great day.